Okay, let's begin today's class. Today we will review the review for midterm mod. Let's see some sample problems. Here, this sample problem is for study the some concepts on our midterm mod. There, in the Cartesian coordinate. For three space, the y axis is the set. Yeah, all the questions are true or false, so we should investigate uh, these statements are is but is correct or not. Here, the x component is zero. If x component is zero, then the point is point lies on the y z plane, and if z is zero. Then the point is lying on the point lies on the x y plane. Since both x and z are zero, the points are on both x y plane and y z plane. And we know that the intersection between x y plane and the y z plane is y axis. So this is correct. Next, uh, the x z plane is perpendicular to the x axis and z axis. Since x, x, since x plane contains x axis and z axis, so this is first. Actually, x z plane is perpendicular to y axis. <clears> the <throat> third problem is the distance from the point. We know how to find the distance between two points. If two points are given, then here we denote P and Q, then the length of PQ is square root of one minus three square, minus two minus zero square, one minus minus one square. So this is square root of four, 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 and this is two square root of three. So this is how to calculate the distance between two points. Uh, uh, you just audit this, <laughs> this class, but uh, in, in, yeah, uh, but you should show all your work in the answer sheet so because we might give you some partial credit for your calculation. Okay, next. Problem. If k is negative, then the graph of this equation is sphere centered at the origin. Since k is negative, there is some r, positive r, satisfying this condition. Then we substitute this relation to here to get r square. Then this equation is the equation of sphere. We center that the origin with the radius r, so this is true. Here, the graph of the equation y equal 4 is the plane parallel to x z plane. This is correct because, uh, because y equal 0 is the x z plane, so y equal 4 is the, is the plane parallel to the x z plane and passing through the point 9, 4, 1. Since here y is four, this point is contained in the plane y equal four. So this is true. Next one. If f is function of the single variable x, here zero, one, two is on the graph in three dimensional space of z equal fx. So this means this relation is independent to the variable y. So in here, since x is zero and z is two, we have two is f zero. So we get the, we get the property of f, f zero is two. Then we should show for every value y, the point zero y two is also on the graph z equal fx. Since this, 
graph z equal fx is independent to the variable y. We don't have to substitute y's value in the equation since x is zero and z is two. So we substitute them into this equation to get two equal f zero. In the assumption, we know that f zero is two. So uh, these points, zero y two is on the graph z equal fx. So this is also true. Any question? Next one. If two arrows drawn in three space have different initial points, then they must represent different vectors. This is first because uh, two vectors are the same vector if the directions and ranks are the same, then they are same vector. So the initial points can be different. Next one is, given any two vectors, V and W, the sum of V plus W uh, vector with, with length equal to the sum of the ranks of V and W. We can easily find the counter example if V is here and W is not parallel to V, then V plus W is here. You know that this, this uh, sum of these red ranks is not equal to the uh, ranks of this, this green, green segment. Actually, we, we have this triangle inequality given by V plus W, ranks of vector V plus W, is smaller, less or equal than length of V plus length of W. Yes, this is triangle inequality. Same line and same direction. If they have opposite direction, then equality does not force. Uh, let me show you how to solve this inequality from the definition of the ranks of vector and the dot product, we have V plus W, V plus W is less or equal than here plus W square plus two V W. This is also equivalent to two V dot W is resort equal than two ranks of V length of W. It is again equivalent to V V W cosine theta here. Theta is the angle between two vectors V and W is smaller than V and W. This is why this triangle, triangle inequality force. You don't have to remember this proof. Here is first. Next problem is for any vector v, the vector 2v and v plus v are equal. This is uh, the definition of the addition and scalar multiplication of vectors. So this is true. Okay, next. Uh, since P1 is 1, 3, and P2 is 0, 5, so vector P1, P2 is uh, the coordinate of P2 minus coordinate of P1. So we get 0 minus 1, 5 minus 3. So we get minus 1, 2. So this is true. The next one from the simple calculation, 2B minus 4w is 2 minus 2, 2 minus 4, 3 minus 4 is minus 4, 4 minus 12 minus 16. Then we get 
this result. So this is true. Where? Ah, uh, yeah, this is typo. Okay. K plus R B plus W is K plus R B plus K plus R. W, so this, this equality does not force in general, so this is first. You hear, uh, if the ranks of V is five, then the ranks of minus V is minus five. Here, the ranks cannot be a uh, negative value. And for, for in general, if a is a scalar and V is a vector, then you know that the ranks of A, V is the absolute value of A times ranks of V. So the ranks of minus V is not minus five, is absolute value of minus one times ranks of V. So this is V. Uh, this is first. Okay, next. Uh, this vector is a unit vector pointing in a direction opposite to the vector minus three, minus three, minus 12. Uh, the, yeah. Let this vector be V. Then the unit vector, which has the same direction with V, is V over ranks of V. This is minus three, minus three, minus 12 over square root of nine plus nine plus This is minus one over three over two, one, one, four by some, from some calculation. So uh, they, have the opposite direction with the same length. So this is true. And the next is, we call that I is one zero zero and J is zero one zero and K is zero zero one. Then we know that three I four J five K is ranks of three, four, five, and this is square root of nine, 16, three, five. So we get this result. So this is true. Yeah. Uh, so yep. If we calculate the dot product between this vector and this vector, then we get minus ranks of V. So we cannot get minus one. So, so to compare them, we should find the, find, you should, we should calculate this unit vector. Understand? Since this V is not a unit vector, so uh, record that the dot product U dot V is ranks of U, ranks of V, cosine theta. So if U and V are not, uh, not unit vectors, then we cannot get minus one in general. Okay, uh, we we'll omit this section, these problems. Okay, now, this is the dot product. Here, the dot product of two vectors is a vector. No, uh, dot product is defined between two vectors. U and V are vectors. But the result of this dot product is scalar. 
So this is wrong. Actually, the cross product between of two vectors is vector. They are vector, but it is also a vector. Actually, cross product is defined on the three dimensional vectors, not in other dimensional vectors. Okay, we use the property of dot product. U dot V is multiplication of length of U and length of V times cosine theta here. Theta is the angle between two vectors. So since U and V are non-zero vector, so the length of U and V are non-zero. So we can cancel these two terms here. Then you get cosine theta equal one over two. So we get theta equal pi over three. So this is true. Okay, next, uh, if u dot v and u dot v is minus ranks of u, ranks of v, and u and v are non zero, we again use the property of the product to get ranks of u, ranks of v, cosine theta. We again cancel the ranks of u and v. We get cosine theta equal minus one. So the angle between u and v is pi. That means u and v has the opposite direction. So if here is vector u, then vector v is here. So we can conclude that this there exists a scalar negative scalar k such that u equal k v. So this is true. Any question? No? K. For any vector v, the component v is two-dimensional vector with component form v1, v2. Here I is the unit vector is parallel to x axis here is i i is one zero since we consider two dimensional vector i and j are one zero and zero one if here is v v is v1 v2 so here is v1 and here is v2 so we find the projection onto vector i, just record the formula, projection of vector v onto vector u is here, vector u should not be, it, it, vector u is non-zero vector. Then the formula is u dot v over u dot u and u. We use this formula to get projection i v to get v i over i i i since this is v1 over 1 i so we get v1 0 similarly we also get projection of vector v onto vector j is 0 v2 using this formula is uh quite easy so instead of explaining the geometric property of projection just use this formula when you have to calculate the projection yeah um, so can you also do it like by inspection like you know just oh it's like a projection but it's like it's like this v1 zero and um, three x axis and like zero each other like can you also get a similar result yeah, yeah, yeah. When, when this is when the given vector is two or three dimensional vector, you can interpret the geometric property like that. But but we don't. But if the, for the higher dimensional, it is hard to observe the. So we just use this formula. Here, e is the unit vector given like this form. So we should find the orthogonal projection of v on e. Projection of v onto e, we just use the formula e dot e, v dot e, e. Since e is unit vector, this is one. 
And from some simple calculation, we get one plus two square root of three and E. So we have one plus two square root of three E. So this is true. This is also true. Okay, any question? Okay, here uh, for our vector u and v, u cross v is minus v cross u. As I said, uh, the magnitude of cross product is the area of this parallelogram. And the direction of cross, cross product is obtained by the right hand rule. So if the order of two vectors are changed, then then, then the direction of vector is changed. So we have minus sign on here. And here, for all vector u, v, w satisfies this condition. We've never studied these identities. Actually, we can find the counter example. Here, we put u equal i and v equal j and w equal j. Here, i, j are unit vector, standard unit vector in three dimensional space. Then the then u cross v cross w should be zero vector because v and w are both j. So v cross v cross w is a zero vector. Since the cross product with zero vector is zero vector, so the left hand side should be uh, the zero vector. However, u cross v cross w is Actually, record that I cross J is K and J cross K is I, K cross I is J. We use this relation to get, since U cross V is I cross J, we get K and W is J. Since K cross J is minus J cross K, we get minus, uh, actually this K cross J is just I. Uh, K cross J, uh, uh, minus I, minus I. K cross J is minus J cross K and J cross K is I. So this is minus I. So the left-hand side is zero vector and the right-hand side is minus I. So we have a counter example. So this identity is first. Yeah. Since, uh, uh, okay, okay, okay. Uh, two, two. To remove this bracket, we should have the associativity of the operation. That means if for the, for the scalars, if A plus B plus C satisfies A plus B and A plus B plus C is A plus B plus C. That's why we can denote A plus B plus, plus C without confusion. However, if, the, if this operation is minus A minus B minus C, then A minus B minus C, this, this identity does not hold. So, so, so that's why we cannot uh, remove this bracket. So actually we call this property associativity. Okay, uh, to calculate this cross product, we have i, j, k, one, two, three, four, five, six. Then we get i, two, six, minus three, five, plus j, three, four, minus one, six, plus k, one, minus two, four to get minus three, six, minus three. So this is true. So just record that how to calculate the cross product from the determinant form. Okay, here, the non-zero vector U and V are orthogonal if and only if 
u cross v is the zero vector. Actually, u cross v is zero vector is equivalent to u cross magnitude of u cross v is zero. And this is also equivalent to magnitude of u, magnitude of v, sine theta is zero. Since u and v are non zero vector, we have sine theta is zero. It means theta is zero or pi. So this is not orthogonal. This is parallel. So this is first. Next, uh, the non zero vector, we again use the same formula u v sine theta, then sine theta should be one. So we get theta is pi over two. So they are orthogonal. So this is true. Next, if u is non zero vector pointing direction of j, so we have u is uh, a j for some positive a, and v is pointing the direction of i. So we said v is b i with positive b. Then u cross v is a j cross b i. Then we use the property of cross product to get a b j cross i. Since i cross j is k, we know that j cross i is minus k. So this is minus a b k. So u cross v is pointing the direction of minus k, not k, minus k. So this is first. Uh, we also have skipped these problems. <clears throat> Okay, here the line passing through the origin and parallel to the vector four to six. So the parameterization can be obtained by T four to six, and this is four T, two T, six T. So we get this equation of X and Y and Z. So this is true. Again, uh, one, one, two, and two, seven minus three are given. If t is zero, then x, y, z is at this at, at one, one, two. And this line is parallel to two, seven minus three. So these two vectors are wrong. They should be changed. So this is first. Here, R1 has parametric equation, this form, and R2 has this form. Then R1, R2 are parallel. Uh, two, before we think about the par parallel, we first express these equations in the vector form. Then R equal 1, 1, 4 plus T, 3, 1, minus 1. And the next one is R2 is 7, 0, 3 plus T minus 6, minus 2, 2. Since two directional vector, three, one, minus one, and minus six, minus two, two are parallel. So these lines are parallel since they are parallel. Okay. Uh, the line containing the point, these two points, has vector equation, this form. Uh, the directional vector, oh, first, uh, these points, these vectors are same to these points, and same as this point, and the directional vector, V, is obtained by 5 minus 3, 1 minus 1, uh, 0 minus 1, minus 1, minus 2. So we get 2 minus 1 minus 3. Since four minus two minus six is parallel to two minus one minus three, this is true.
Uh, yes, yes. Only the direction of the direction vector is important. Okay, uh, here, R1 is given by, okay, let's omit this question because I've never discussed about the concept skew. Okay, here, the vector equation describes the line segment from this point to this point. If we substitute t equal zero, then we get minus two, one, four. If you put t equals three, then we get seven, one, one. So this, this vector equation describes the line segment from these two points. Okay, uh, as I said, to find the normal vector, normal vector of the plane, we should, we can write down the normal vector from the coefficient. There are three minus four and one. So in this statement, perpendicular to the vector line, minus 12, three. This is 3n, so this plane is also perpendicular to this vector. And the next statement is contains the point 0, 0, 1. If we substitute 0, 0, 1 into x and y and z, then we get 0 minus 0 plus 1 minus 1 is 0. So this point is, this point lies on the given plane, so this is true. Next one is, uh, if A is the plane containing points P1, P2, P3, uh, P1 and P2 and P3 is any other points in three space and P1, P2, P3 satisfies this concept, then P1, P2 must be a normal vector for the plane. Uh, actually, we have a counter example in here. Let this plane be A. And P1, P2 is given like given on this plane. And if you assume uh, this the vector P1, P3 is on the plane A and perpendicular to P1, P2, since A is a plane, we can uh, we have two orthogonal vector which is contained in this plane. So if we set P3 like this, then P1, P3 is not a normal vector of this plane. So this is first. Okay. Uh, next problem, there are the four points are or, or lie in the same plane. Uh, I will not calculate all, all of this all of, all, all of this problem, but uh, let me explain how to prove it, prove it. First, you should find the plane which is containing these three points. You've learned how to find the equation of the plane which is containing these three points. Uh, we find the normal vector of the plane by this cross product, PQ cross PR. After that, we end dot X minus P equal zero. Then this is the equation of the plane. And after that, you check that this point is satisfies this equation, then these four points are on the same plane. Or if not, then uh, they are not on the same plane. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, you only have to find any normal vector. You can also take QR cross QP and RP cross RQ. Ah, uh, yeah, for uh, P can be replaced by Q 
Q or R, because this P is an arbitrary point on the plane. Yeah. Okay. Here, okay. Uh, the here. Uh, Zeta is the acute angle of inter intersection between the planes, these planes and these planes. I said to calculate the angle between two planes, just calculate the angle between two normal vectors. So we take two normal vectors from these two equations, and on is zero minus two minus one, and two is three, four, one. Then we calculate the angle between n one and n two by cosine theta equal n one dot n two over length of n one length of n two. Then you get minus eight minus one over square root of five square root of twenty six. This is minus nine over square root of five square root twenty six. However, we have this minus negative sign in here if we compare to here, but uh, but this problem want acute angle. So in our case, we measure the we measured this angle in in our case. So we calculate cosine pi minus theta to get an over square root of five square root of twenty six. So this is true. Okay. Let me omit this to problem, but uh, I will unload the answer to the canvas. Okay. Since these problems are related to quadratic surface, let me omit. Okay, now the vector function and space curve. They're graphing the vector value function is equivalent to graphing the parametric equation x equal ft, y equal gt, and z equal ht. So this is true. The graph of this vector value function here x is cosine t, y is 3 sine t, and z is 5. Since x and y satisfies x squared plus y squared equal 9, instead of 9, we denote 3 squared, and z equal 5. So to find the graph of this vector value function, we only have to investigate the form of this, the intersection of these two surfaces. Z equal five is the plane which is parallel to X Y plane and it contains five zero zero five the point zero zero five and the first equation is X square plus Y square equals three square is the cylinder made by the made made from the circle on the X Y plane uh, with the radius with radius three so. So the conclusion is, it's a circle of radius three centered at zero, zero, 005 and line in the plane Z equal five. So this is true. The next, next problem is, if two vector variable functions R1 and R2 have the same graph, then R1 equal R2. We can easily find the counter example if R1 is TB and if R2 is two TB, then they have they they are expressing the same line, but they are different functions. So this is first. Uh, but the graph is same. But uh, yes, that, that yeah 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 that. That also can be an uh, example because we have the same graph. Okay, from the simple calculation, this is true. And we should denote the constant vector C in here. So this is first. And here we have the derivative of R in here. So if we find RT, then this is. We integrate three t squared to get 
T to the three and one over two E to T plus T and C. And we substitute zero into here to get zero one half plus vector C is one one because vector I plus vector J is one one. Here we get vector C and we can express the expressive form of vector function R. So this is true. We don't really con contain simple calculation. So let me omit it. Here, mm, the tangent vector, we calculate the R prime T to get three, one over two T plus two, three T square. And we substitute T equal zero to get R prime zero is three, one over two square root of two and zero. So, so, so this is true. And the next one here, the RT at the point, the, the line tangent to the curve at the point T equal one is perpendicular to the plane, uh, something. Here, R prime T is, minus one, two T and four. We substitute T equal one to get R prime one is minus one, two, four. We know how to, we know how to get the normal vector from the equation of the plane. This is two minus two minus four, just from the coefficient of X and Y and Z. So, and this normal vector N and R prime one are not parallel. So this is first. Next one is, if the dot product between R and derivative of R is constant, then we calculate the ddt R dot R prime equal D dt five. Since five is constant, we have zero uh, from the derivative of product, we get R dot R, R prime dot R prime plus R dot R double prime. So we get, uh, since this is the rank square of R prime, we get R dot square plus R dot R double, uh, uh, R double prime is zero. So this is true. Okay, uh, here is the arc cranks and curvature here. The arc cranks from R minus one to R two is three. This is true because we use the arc cranks parameterization. We know that R S is zero to uh, since S, is t0 to t r prime u du. So the ranks from r minus one to r zero is one and ranks from r zero to r one is also one. So also this ranks is also one. So the ranks from r ranks from r minus one to r two is three. Uh, the second problem is here. if C is graph of smooth vector variable function R and defined on the interval I, then the unit normal vector is defined or in or T in I. Uh, as I said, if uh, the, uh, the, the, the definition of normal vector, unit normal vector N is the derivative of tangent vector over ranks of the derivative of tangent vector. So if the ranks of T prime is zero, then we cannot define the normal vector. If C is a, it's a straight line given by RT equal VT, then, then 
the unit tangent vector t is v over length of v. This implies the derivative of t is zero. So in this case, we don't we cannot define the normal vector. Here the line has the constant curvature equivalent to v, not 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 the magnitude of v. This is this should be zero. Speed is length of vector v. So this is first. And we've learned before the curvature at any point of a circle of radius a is one over a. So this is true. Okay. <clears throat> Here, this r is given by the, uh, the position given by this form. Then the velocity, our prime t, is 2 into the 2t, 3t squared minus 1. So our prime 1 is 2 into the 2, 3 minus 1. So the ranks of our prime 1 is square root of 4e to the 4 plus 10. So this, this is correct. And from this formula for the velocity, we also get the acceleration. Our double prime is 4 into the 2t, 6t, 0. So we also substitute t1 into t to get 4 to the 2, uh, into the 4 into the 2, 6, 0. So this is also correct. So this is true. And we omit these two questions. And here, if at time t, object's acceleration have, has magnitude five. In this problem, we use this formula. A is a t t plus a n n. And this implies the Rank square of a is a t square plus a n square. In this case, uh, this is five square, and here tangential component is four, so this is four, two, and the normal component is one. So, since this identity does not hold, this is first. Okay, uh, the we omit this problem. And this is the last problem. Here we have A and this acceleration A is the derivative of V. We get V T is T square minus cosine T plus some um, constant vector C. Since V zero is one zero, we can easily get T square plus one, one minus cosine T. If we just substitute t equal zero, then we get c and we can express this form. Okay, uh, I will unload this file with more comments and we have a midterm one in next, uh, this Wednesday. Okay. See you this Wednesday.